Hello guys, welcome to my channel. I'm gonna be doing something a little bit differently today. I mostly do just um, Overwatch gameplay with music, but today specifically, I'm gonna do something I've been wanting to do for a while. Tomorrow is my birthday, August 28th, which is probably the day when this video will come out. And I wanted to do something special to me, so I decided why not rewatch Avatar, right? I've rewatched Avatar a couple of times. I've seen it about four times throughout my life. Um, book one came out when I was 15, I think. I think it was 2005, I was 15 then. And uh, by far, it's one of my favorite series of all time. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but I wanted to rewatch it. I mean, I knew it was on Netflix. And uh, I thought, hey, might as well rewatch it now that I have like easy access to it. I don't have to go through like different random venues to like catch the episodes online somewhere, you know, with some really bad quality. Um, but I put it off. I've been working, so it's been a bit hard to just sit down and watch something long, you know, long form. Um, I rewatched the season two of the Umbrella Academy, though. That was, that was pretty good. Anyways, I decided to rewatch it at some point, but then like not too long ago, I saw that Korra came out, and I was like, oh, they have Korra too. I can rewatch Korra too, and I think I'd appreciate, you know, rewatching it too, because Korra I have not seen that many times. Um, I think maybe twice. I'm not really sure. Since it's gonna be my birthday tomorrow, I decided why not rewatch Avatar, you know, as an adult. I know this is supposedly a kid's show, even though it's not really a kid's show. You know, the reality is that it's too much, too good of a show to be just called a kid's show. It has so many good lessons that I can honestly say have affected me throughout my life. You know, I can remember specific lessons, even though I don't remember specific. I do remember the major plot points of the series, but I know I don't remember most of, you know, the specifics about the any of the episodes, not really. But the character progression, all that, yes, I do remember. Really, really good. Really, really good. One of the series that inspired me, you know, as a writer um, on how to do character development because it is great. I remember, like, most of the characters got really good development. Um, I'm not really sure, like, how many of them really did. I mean, I know the main cast did, but maybe side characters do. Uh, I need to... That's why I need to rewatch the series. I think I have more appreciation for it now. Um... Especially since I am an adult and I'm about to turn 30 on the 28th, which is hopefully when this video comes out. Um, I'm shooting on the 27th, uh, but through the editing process, I hopefully will come out by tomorrow. Um, I plan on doing multiple episodes today, but I'll probably just release episode 1 on the 28th on my birthday. And then, um, since I mean, I work full time, but I'm free the next three days, so hopefully I can get some real good progress, maybe um, do episode one the quickest, and then see if I can get all the other episodes, you know, edit them down, maybe have them scheduled to come out, I don't know, every couple of days or whatever, up until next Thursday when I'm free again. And then I have three more days to work on this, which is something that I really want to do. Especially since, you know, there's not much that you can do now with the whole, um, you know, virus thing. So, I decided why not spend some time rewatching this series, this amazing series. But anyways, um, I wanted to rewatch Avatar as an adult, especially since I have more context now. I have lived life, I have been through experiences, unfortunately life has not been that kind to me, especially in the last couple of years. You know, especially since 2017, um, my dad passed away on April of the 2017th, um, you know, uh, a couple of months after. I remember it was uh, our August, Hurricane Maria came to Puerto Rico, um, Puerto Rican. I, you know, lived most of my life on the island. I've been in the States for about three years collectively, spread out because um, I came back here on the December 2019. And I have been here um, since then, but uh, you know, Hurricane Maria hit, which is one of the reasons I left. You know, Helps for my family and all that, because jobs have been bad. They still are really bad in Puerto Rico, but that's that's not the point here. Anyways, um, you know, after that, it's been you know, I had to go away from my family, 
um, you know, it was, it was new just being by myself, even though I did have family when I moved, because I moved to Florida, I had a family over there, and they allowed me to stay with them, I got a job, but they moved to Columbus, Ohio, and I got a job over, over there, but then there I was um, by myself, well, with one of my best friends from childhood, but, you know, not, we, neither of us had any real family um, close by, so we were basically like closed off and just working all the time. Um, so obviously, you know, with all this context that I've had, have had piled up on my life, maybe rewatching this show will, I'll, I'll find some new insight, um, that I hadn't considered before, you know, as you grow older, it's like, you know, wisdom comes with age, but for wisdom to come with age, you also have to be receptive to it. You have to be able to allow yourself to change for the better and it's something that you have to do actively you can't really do it passively you have to accept the fact that you have made mistakes that you are not a perfect person that there is room to grow and improve it doesn't always mean that you this doesn't mean that you need to be better than anyone else just better than the person that you were before um and just striving towards you know just being a more complete human being allowing yourself to grow beyond those boundaries that we like foolishly set out for ourselves like there is no need for them so you know but trust is something that you also have to to come to like you have to grow to in order to trust is a very delicate thing the thing is that people when they're young they trust openly they don't believe, like, children do not believe that anyone is evil. They will trust you. They don't know how the world is. But then as they grow older, they realize that not everyone is kind, not everyone is good. Not everyone has their best interests um, for you in their heart when they do stuff or when they ask stuff off of you, off you. So, you know, once... We go through those experiences it, be, it becomes harder for us to trust openly again because we know that people can do harm and not everyone you know wants what's best for you as already said but the thing is that as you grow older you have to realize that the hurt that comes from that betrayal of trusting somebody is usually better than not trusting anybody at all and um, you have to learn to open yourself to that. You, but you have to be brave to open yourself to that kind of hurt. It's like loving. You have to open yourself to it. But the fact is that by opening yourself up to it, you become vulnerable to being hurt. And it is in knowing that you can be hurt. And even then, continue to wanting to love openly and trust openly that shows, you know, true humility and kindness. In my mind, that's what it means to be, you know, a good person that lives in happiness. I don't know. Anyways, let's move on to the show now. I've been rambling for too long now. I'm going to have to edit this down a whole freaking bunch. So, whatever. Let's jump into the episode. Oh wow, the old Nickelodeon um, intro thing. Ah, okay. Oh, right, the intro was, is different on the first episode. But when the world needed him most, he wow. And me and my brother to look after our Such children. And that the cycle is broken. But I haven't lost hope. That's awesome because Ang is in there and then like I think since episode two onward he's always standing there. And if you see Sokka's and Katara's face right there in the beginning, they look like such children and it's just one year till the end of book three and they they've all grown so much by then. <laughs> they look so sad. Ah. Uh... Poor fish, he's like, what the f*** is going on? I mean, he can't really go anywhere. Yeah. 
tell of guitar. I mean, even now you can see guitar is powerful. Now that's your fault, guitar. I mean, I mean, Sokka did piss you off, I guess. It's both you guys' fault. Wait, wait. Let me go back. Let me let me go back in the seconds real quick. Look at that. That I never noticed that. You see how uh, Sokka actually had his arm over Katara. Like they were fighting all that. And even then, he was trying to protect her. I think that's why Sokka is a bit insecure. Even though he is, you know, brave. Cause like. I remember that his dad told him like he needed to protect like the tribe and and, and his sister, and he lost. Oh, here here comes our boy. Looks so amazing, but it must be so scary for them. Sokka must be so scared right now. That's the thing though. Sokka is brave because he is scared and even then he tries to protect people. <laughs> Come on, man. He just freaking woke up from a coma. I mean, he doesn't know it's been a hundred years, but it's like, we'll bash him on the head. There it is. Moment of truth. This is when my boy fell in love. Here he comes, the best character in the whole show. Oh, boss. Big boy. Ugh, bless you, my dude. Ugh, that's bad. Ugh, ah! <laughs> Whoa, the animators put extra love on that booger. Come on, Appa. You can do it, baby. The belly flop. Blah! He's got a crush already. Uh, um, I used to have a crush on Katara too. Can't blame you, man. Find him. Your father, grandfather, and great grandfather all tried and failed. Because their honor didn't hinge on the Avatar's capture. Mine does. And I was like, why is Iro telling him this? But now that I think about it, like up until this point. Let me just pause it for a moment. Up until this point, the Avatar had been missing for a hundred years. So for him, I think it's been, what, three years since he was banished? Maybe two years since Suko was banished? And it's like, you know, he's been looking for him all this time. They haven't found him still. And I think Iris just trying like to steer him off that path. Like Suko, like up until this point, they don't know the Avatar. It's actually like back. So it's like, you know, Suko, stop going down this this road. It's not gonna go anywhere. Like it's futile. So if you, I mean, the Avatar hasn't been found in a hundred years. It's probably never gonna come back. You know that that's their mindset. So it's like the sooner that you take off that as a possibility of uh, a thing that you can do to regain your honor and live your life or like go back to the way things were is like the sooner Suko can actually focus on living his life and I think that's what Iroh was trying to do like Suko like stop this this is nonsense like you're pursuing something that you can't achieve because it's not that he doesn't believe that Suko can't do it it's just that you know from their perspective it's an impossibility right now i mean he um, iroh doesn't believe that the avatar is back suko only believes that the avatar is back because he's so desperate to find the avatar that he just wants to you know anything anything is a sign of the avatar it's like is that a 21 there on the wall that means the avatar is back or something like that you know <laughs> like he's just desperate for a sign so i think he if he just saw something he would just say oh the avatar is back or whatever um so i think that's why he doesn't like why iroh is like uh stop this because kind of i was like why is iroh telling him this like it's impossible like i know iroh believes in suko so why is he telling him like oh this is something that can't be done and it's like oh right he doesn't know the avatar is back so it's just him trying to like 
like from episode one he's already trying to get him to stop living up to this destiny he believes he needs to live up to and just focus on finding himself and you know growing beyond this thing that he's holding on because he's just holding on to this he's just holding on to this thing because he believes that it will allow him to return back to a time where he felt happy you know but he was never happy being with um Ozai, I think his, his dad's name was. He was never happy with Ozai. He's always been like happy with his mom and Iroh. And the reality is that because he got so focused on that, he didn't realize that, dude, um, you're actually super chill right now. Like, you don't have to live up to this maniac that hates his children if they're not perfect because he somehow believes that what they do reflects on him and if, if they're not strong that it, it makes him weak I don't know at least that's how I see it I don't know if it's true now this this must have been so scary for him you gotta save your boy hey hey checking him out Oh, so he was just standing outside Aang's, you know, tent. Hmm. I love how his face just changes. Check again! That's right, motherfucker. Try not, try not to put all your hopes in this boy. And then it's like, everybody. Everybody puts their hope in Aang, which is actually the reason also why he ran away during the storm. Is like, uh, you know, everybody is the Avatar. He's supposed to do something about this whole war thing. So it's like everyone's just putting all their hopes on him, and it's that pressure that makes him leave and left the world like a hundred years without an Avatar. So it's like, you know what? Yeah, I think I'll take it back. Yeah, Katara, don't put all your hopes on him. The poor kid has enough things to deal with he's filled with much wisdom i think yang's wise for having fun oh my god i love iro determined face iro is the best no power and fire bending comes from the breath not the muscles the breath becomes energy in the body the energy extends past your limbs and becomes fire the way Iroh just described fire, I remember that uh, when they go to the Sun Warriors, I think they're called the, the Aztec guys that um, they go to in book three. Yeah, it must be book three because I know Aang and Suko are there. They do the whole dragon dance thing and they say that Iroh had actually been blessed by the masters too. So right now, I feel like he's teaching Suko how to properly firebend and he is not listening it's like this is the thing like even from episode one Iroh is literally telling, he's telling me power and fire member come from the breath not the muscles right now Suko, you think throwing a punch and being angry it's proper firebending but you don't understand that that's not that's not the true way it's like it's a perverted way you know a twisted way that's become popular in the fire nation since they are a war hungry nation so like i feel like he's talking to him about what he's learned about what true oh you know what i just remembered um i i think i remember when he's with the white lotus and they're all like standing i think it's on a rock or something and he starts breathing and you can see the you know, I, I think that's when the, the Sosin's comedy already came. I'm not sure if he was with the comedy or not. But anyways, as he's breathing, you can just see the fire just pulsing and growing around them. And it's like, he's not doing anything at all with his body besides breathing. And he was commanding so much fire that it shows how masterful he is in this specific way of firebending. You know? War going on? What war? What are you talking about? You're kidding, right? Hey, 
his attention span. They just told him there's a war going on and just fuck it. That, that's the thing. Like, it was nice that he was having fun with the kids and all that, but I can understand Sokka's perspective as to why he's so like, we gotta do this, we gotta do this. This is important because for him, it is true. They have lived their lives. Like, their whole life has just been a war going on. You know, the Fire Nation has always been technologically superior to all the other nations. And that's always been kind of weird to me. Maybe it's because they use fire. And maybe they use fire to power these machines. Aang, how long were you in that iceberg? I don't know. A few days, maybe? I'll try again, boy. I'm sorry, Aang. Maybe somehow there's a bright side to all this. I did get to meet you. Uh, play it. Mm. Uh -oh. oh, okay. Right, I thought it was gonna blow up. Right, right. It's... I mean, lucky they have that. The last airbender. Quite agile for his old age. Wake my uncle! <laughs> Tell him I found the avatar. Is he missing an eyebrow, too? Oh, shit. Yahoo! Oh, I forgot. Wow, these episodes feel so short. So, um, first thoughts on the, I mean, thoughts on the first episode. Great introduction. I'm trying to, like, see it as someone who hasn't seen the show before, even though I have. But really good episode. Introduced uh, most of the main characters, like the main antagonist, Suko. Even though we know that Suko turns out good in the end. Um... It's still really good, like, to, like, how well they established his motivation to try and get the Avatar back, how driven he is. I haven't actually shown him, like, properly fighting, but you saw, you saw the way he spoke to his uncle, you saw the way he, well, how the way he fought with the guys he was training with, so you know he needs to be taken seriously. Besides the scar, it just makes him look menacing. And then you see Katara, you see Sokka. I actually did enjoy that, uh, they, they were setting them up really well. Like, there's something in my eye. You see Katara, and Katara wants to find a master. Like, she wants to learn waterbending. Sokka, um, you can already see, like, what his mindset is. It's, you know, my target, my people, I have to protect them. Um, they still haven't shown why, but, like, if you remember when he was little, his dad asked him to protect his sister and the tribe. So, and he already, like, he already lost his mom. So, I know he must be, like, specially hurt that he wasn't able to do anything then. So, he's preparing so that if he has to do something he will be able to even though he's a bit incompetent but um any i mean in the beginning they're all i mean look at the guitar like she can she can do some water but she can't really do like shit Yahoo! and then in the end you know she's a powerhouse even Sokka, he turns out like really badass it's really good with the boomerang i can't mean we can't and nobody can deny his great with a freaking boomerang especially when he hit the shot on the sparky sparky boom man the dude with the eye and you then you see Aang and he's so childish and I appreciate how carefree he is um, but I do like that the show really likes to pause on serious moments you know and there might be some levity but most of the time like when it's serious it's serious and I appreciate that Aang can do the shift from being childish to being serious but here you can see how childish she truly is like this is like the first episode so this is like the rawest form we'll see these characters this is like their baseline right now so i looking at them way forward into the future is like you can see the uh, growth so i honestly appreciate like it you can see how i mean obviously they seem one dimensional because it's the first episode you haven't really gotten context about how who they are what they do you know what their passions are but as a first episode really good really iconic the boy in the iceberg just ang in that ball of ice is like it's kind of ex exciting not gonna lie because uh i get these memories of rewatching this as a kid not knowing what's what the show was gonna be or how much i was gonna I enjoy it but now knowing that how much i have it's like you just get chills like 
uh, here we go again. This is a start. Uh, this Ang meeting Katar, meeting Saga for the first time. There's Suko, there's Iro, you know, all these great characters that we haven't seen grow because, you know, we haven't seen the show, but that I know they will. And I'm really, really excited to, to see that. So if you'd like to see more, uh, please like and subscribe to my channel. Turn on notifications so you know when I'll be posting. I still don't know when I'll be posting a second episode to this. I'll probably just keep recording right now. Um, maybe do a couple more episodes and then later in the day I'll start editing. Hopefully if I can get the first episode by the 28th. Um, maybe, depending on, although maybe like every two days or something like that. Um, hopefully I can get to work on, on actually recording this and then sitting down and just video editing non-stop. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more of my content, you can, as I said, subscribe to my channel. I have some Overwatch gameplay with some music and stuff like that. It's nothing else besides that. I have some, some gameplay of other games that you might enjoy. I don't have a lot just because I'm really obsessed with Overwatch right now. And when I say right now, I mean for the past four years. Anyways, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.